Hello and welcome to All Top 5s. Going by a suggestion from the comments on one of my other folklore videos, I would like to highlight Slavic folklore this week. Slavs form a large ethnic group of peoples spreading from the southeastern to the northeastern parts of Europe, and the mythology that has evolved with them is fascinating. Here are five of the most interesting creatures from Slavic folklore. Number 5. Domovoy Starting with a fairly well-known creature, the Domovoy is an important figure in Slavic folklore. Generally they are depicted as hairy males, often with long beards, and sometimes a tail or horns. They dwell in their own chosen household, living usually hidden alongside the occupying family. The tradition is that every house has a Domovoy, and it is viewed as the guardian of the home. People will appease a resident Domovoy by leaving gifts for him – milk, bread, tobacco and porridge, for example. However, if the family disrespects a Domovoy, it will make banging noises and move items around, much like a poltergeist, but it will never harm people. Although they're rarely seen, the Domovoy's voice is more often experienced. It is supposed to have a hollow, harsh voice, much in keeping with its haggard, old appearance, and has even been known to transform occasionally into a cat or a dog. More seriously, the Domovoy is said to be an oracle who predicts the future. If he laughs, sings or dances, then good fortune can be expected. But if he screams throughout the night, snuffs out a candle or shows himself, it's said a family member will die. A useful and benevolent, if slightly creepy, household spirit then, the Domovoy. Number 4. Leshy The Leshy is a spirit that lives in Slavic forests according to the folklore. Much like the Domovoy, they are said to protect the forests that they inhabit and the plants and creatures that live there. In appearance, they are enormous like giant men with long hair and beards made of plant material. However, they're known for their ability to transform into any living plant or animal, always retaining their bright green eyes though. Traditionally, the Leshy isn't inherently evil, and doesn't usually wish to cause harm to humans. However, there are stories of the creature being mischievous, leading travellers down the wrong path or deeper into woods or caves. They're supposed to be able to do this by imitating the voice of people close to the traveller, luring them in. The Leshy will let them go after they've had enough fun, however. Woodcutters have also been known to lose axe heads in the Leshy's forests, presumably stolen by the protective creature. It's not all mischief though. Farmers were said in folk tales to befriend Leshies by offering them a cross worn around their neck. They would do this to gain the Leshy's protection, having the ancient protector watch over their crops and sheep, preventing the animals from wandering too far into the woods. Number 3. Ovinik not a lot is known about the creepy Ovinik, but its popularity has gained it a permanent place in RPGs and tabletop games. It's a spirit of Eastern Slavic origin that lives in and around the Threshing House. These houses were generally two-storey buildings that were kept warm by a furnace. As they were used to dry and store harvested grain, which could easily catch fire, the Threshing House was kept far away from the main house. Inevitably, this grain would catch fire sometimes, and the Slavs believed that it was the work of a malevolent being called an Ovinik who set it alight. To try and avoid this, people would percate the Ovinik, offering him roosters and also blini, a type of pancake. It's not all bad though, some believed that on New Year's Eve, to touch an Ovinik would determine the coming year's fortune, good or bad. If he was warm to the touch, the year would hold good things, but if he was cold, there would be misfortune and unhappiness. Number 2. Kikimora The Kikimora is very well known, being considered the opposite of the Domovoy usually, his bad spirit counterpart. In Slavic folklore, the Kikimora shares many similarities with the Domovoy, inhabiting a house by living in its stove or sometimes the cellar, and making noises like mice to attempt to be offered food. However, it's not all so sweet. If we look at the word Kikimora, many believe it stems from an ancient word meaning scarecrow. Alternatively, the Mora part of the name in the Balkan regions may refer to a nightmare. In fact, there's a close relation to the Slavic spirits known as Mora or Mara, who took the form of women and visited men and children in their sleep, trying to kill them by strangulation. 
Actually, Russian folklore traditionally assumed that sleep paralysis was caused by such spirits, and the Kikamora was feared from there on. You could repel one by turning your pillow over and making the sign of a cross on it. In many tales, however, Kikimori are a little more benign, and there were two known types. If a Kikimora came from a forest, it was said to be married to the Domovoy of the house. If she came from the swamp, which you could tell by her wet footprints, it's said that she was married to the Leshi of the nearest forest. They're all related. It's hard to remove a Kikimora from the house, but she'll pay her keep if the house is happy and in order. She'll look after the household's chickens and do housework, including spinning yarn for her own purposes. If she's not happy, however, she'll make noises at night and smash plates and bowls, whistling all the while. Number 1. Rusalka this creature is a water nymph in Slavic mythology and folklore, something similar to a mermaid, but with a much darker story. The Rusalka is traditionally not evil, believed to be linked to fertility and to emerge from their watery home in spring to breathe moisture into the local crops and fields. However, into the 19th century, the folklore changed, considering the Rusalka a malevolent and dangerous creature. Many, though not all, were believed to be undead, the spirits of young women who drowned either as suicide for being unhappy with their marriage, or murdered by a violent husband, usually for an unwanted pregnancy. A really horrible origin for such a creature, and she would go on to haunt the waterway she died in. Although the Rusalka could pass on in peace if her death was avenged, she lived her undead life attempting to attract young men and killing them. She would do this by appearing to the boy as the young woman she had been in life, seducing him with her beauty and her voice, and luring him into her waterway. Once she had him in the water, she would entangle his feet in her long red hair and pull him fully under. Her body would become slippery like a fish so the young man couldn't reach the surface and would drown. Some stories say she would tickle him while laughing under the water, causing him to drown even faster. In early June every year, there is believed to be a Rusalka week when she is feared the most. During this week, the Rusalka, normally bound to her waterway, is free to leave. She sits in and swings from tree branches, able to pounce on her prey even more easily. People are more frightened to swim during this time for fear that the dangerous Rusalka might spy them and drown them. The Rusalka has inspired more modern stories and operas, showing that she's still highly feared and respected, even to this day. And that's it from all top fives for this week. Let me know what you think of these in the comments, but remember to be polite and considerate. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, and you can hit the subscribe button for more weekly videos from me. So peace and love to each and every one of you, and I'll see you all next time on All Top Fives.